What's up, gentlemen? Joshua Rogers here with Men's Wellness, and today I want to talk about Zyostead. So Zyostead is an auto-injector for hormone replacement therapy, primarily for men. And I want to talk about what is it? What do the drug companies say about it? What does the results actually produce? I ran a seven-day, or excuse me, eight-day study. What are my gripes about it? And then what are some of the things I like about it? So let's get into it. So what is Zyosed? Zyosed is a testosterone replacement therapy that's FDA approved. Um, it's in the format of testosterone enantiate. So there's three basic types of testosterone used for hormone replacement therapy. The first and most common is cypionate, and it has a little bit of a longer half-life to it. There's enethionate, which is a little bit shorter. It's kind of a mid-range, somewhere between five days, depending on the guy, but it's around five days. And then there's propionate, which is much shorter um, half-life there. And that means it's going to be how long, how long is it going to be in your system before half of it has been removed and metabolized. So it's in a sesame oil. So some people ask about that. Testosterone replacement therapies are generally suspended in oil when they're injected. Um, they use different types. In this case, it's sesame oil. So some people do have a mild allergy to that. It's not that common, but some people really do have, a, have an allergy to it. Or if you're trying to avoid seed oil, some people want to avoid those. Um, it, is, it is based in a, in a seed oil. So um, it's done in such a way and why this is different, where it's an auto injector. So meaning there's just like an EpiPen almost. There's a small needle in there about the size of an insulin syringe, 27 gauge if you want to be specific. Um, there's a spring in here, and that spring, when this is depressed, this is a testing, is depressed. Um, the spring pushes that needle into you and injects the medicine for you. It says it takes 10 seconds. Um, when I have done this on real time, you'll see that is part of the video. It takes about three seconds. Um, so it's very quick. It takes a reasonable amount of pressure when you're pushing it in, so it actually makes contact and as it pushes the skin, this is much easier than what it really is. Um, that pressure that you're putting on your skin makes you not feel the needle go in at all. So sometimes you'll do it and you'll wonder if anything was injected at all, and it definitely was, which is one of the reasons why this is nice, where the, the pain and the pinprick of doing it um, is great. And that's why it's also great for someone that can't give themselves an injection for whatever reason, whether they're nervous about it, they're, they're concerned about not doing it right or whatever. Um, this, pretty much anyone can do this, um, which makes it very convenient. So when you get the box, it's gonna basically just look like this. You get four of those per month is what that's gonna look like. The actual device looks just like this. So it's a blue cap and it's an auto injector. So what you're gonna do is you just, just spins off Right, so it just spins off, and you're going to press this portion of 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 uh, the device into your into your belly to create a platform. So I'll show you how to do it. Start with just a regular old alcohol pad. You tear that open, pinch a piece of belly fat if you've got that, like I do. Create a nice platform, let it dry off for a second, and then you're just going to press this directly in and hold it until those uh, there's like an orange indicator that, that will come down there. So you're just going to depress that. The direction says hold it for 10 seconds, but it's really more like three and that's it. And this just goes in the trash. So, um, too easy. That's how you do Zyostead. Done. So Zyostead is supposedly going to produce a much slower, flatter curve, right? So that means it's absorbed subcutaneously in the sub Q layers, which is the fat layer there's less blood vessels there. And anyone that's you know, processed any animals through hunting or whatever, or even just seen steaks, um, that's white. And it's white because there's less blood flow there. So the idea is you put it in there, it's gonna trickle into the system at a much slower rate. Um, so that's the idea behind doing it subcutaneously. So, all right, so let's go over the numbers. So like I said, when I first started this study, I had three weeks of no testosterone. Um, and that put my total testosterone at 138 nanograms for, for, per deciliter. And that's going to be consistent throughout, so I'm not going to redo it the whole time. I typically focus mostly on the free testosterone, but in this case, once it drops below 250, um, the calculation to get it actually becomes very inaccurate. So 
it didn't result um, on the actual lab. I'm also going to be tracking my estrogen as it converts from testosterone over into estradiol throughout the study. So my total test was 138 and my estradiol was 18, so nice and low um, as well. So after my labs, I had 100 milligrams dose of xylostead. And then I checked my labs the next day, approximately at the same time. And it went from 138 to 990, um, which is a, a, a pretty decent response. My free test went from unmeasurable up to about 109. And my estrogen started to convert some from 18 to 33, 24 hours later. So now we're on day two. The testosterone was again still rising at um, 1157 with a free test of 132 and my estrogen's coming up to 41, um, which I typically tolerate just fine. Day three, it's starting to go up even a little bit higher at 1226 with a free test of 161 and an estradiol of 40. So this is where it starts to delineate a little bit. Normally, cypionate would have already peaked by now, especially if I did it intramuscularly. So it did take up to three days for that to start to get to over that 1200 range um, with a free test of about 161. So the next day, so now we're on day four, so we're just crossing that midweek and my testosterone started to drop at this point. So it dropped to 1040, so 1040. My free test started to drop as well at 133 with a free test, excuse me, with an estradiol of 41, which stayed about the same. Um, this is when the weekend hit, so there was a couple days in between there. I rechecked it when the lab reopened, so I am on day eight. So I would just be one day past where I would be giving myself another injection. So on that day eight, my testosterone was back down to 433 with a free test of 151 and an estradiol of 23. So you can really start to see the estrogen and free testosterone really start to nosedive, um, which Cipionate does as well. Uh, but this was probably a little bit more so. So the results were better than I expected, to be honest with you, but still not nearly as good as um, what I would see with uh, testosterone cypionate, especially if I was doing cypionate with more than one injection per week frequency. So it did produce reasonable results, to be honest with you. Um, and for some people, that might be just what they're looking for, and that's all that they need, and they're really happy with that especially given that they can't give themselves an injection on their own. So they may, this may be a great solution for them that still can't give themselves an injection on their own um, or, may doesn't, or may not require a higher testosterone levels to resolve their symptoms. Some of my final thoughts about testosterone replacement therapy with, with Zyostead in comparison to some other forms is it's okay. Um, there's some gripes, primarily meaning I can't adjust it as your provider. I don't like that I can't really change it too much. I don't like that it's um, significantly more expensive, um, and I don't like that it leaves knots in the skin. However, it's extremely convenient. It does not hurt at all when you do it, and just about anyone can do it. We even have some folks with um, some physical handicaps that don't have any trouble doing this treatment there, which is another consideration. So. I don't think it's bad. I think it's another tool in the toolbox. I think for the right patient, it's great. Um, there's a reason why it's not the most popular version of hormone replacement therapy in the country um, as compared to Cipionate, but it's still good. And for the right person, this is actually a good option. So I do still write this prescription. It's just at a much lower rate than I would Cipionate. But in general, I do think it's probably worth a try if what some of the things I said about it made sense to you and may fit your lifestyle better than just plain cypionate that you're just doing a typical injection for. So if you've got questions about this, um, give us a call, shoot us a text message, and I'd love to go over with you in more detail in person. If you've got more questions about some of the further details of the studies, like I have more labs than what I, when I showed through here, or some other questions about the mini study, um, put them in the comment section and I'll try to answer those the best I can, or I'll just, or you can message me directly. I'm happy to see it then. So we'll see you guys soon. Appreciate you.